Auto Light and its 98,000 dealers bring you Mr. Herbert Marshall in tonight's presentation of Suspense. Tonight, Autolite presents a new radio adaptation of one of the most famous suspense stories ever written, Mary Godwin Shelley's Frankenstein. Our star, Mr. Herbert Marshall. Hello there, hello. Well, mend my fences if it's not the senator. How's it look for you, Senator? Uh, <clears throat> uh, uh, going to cast your ballot tomorrow, Harlow? Why, Senator, I'd no more forget to vote than forget to winterize my car. And now's the time to do it. Get the oil and grease changed, put in antifreeze, inspect the battery cable. And check the spark plugs, too. Right, Johnny Plug Check. The spark plugs are the very heart of your car's ignition system. And when they're right, your chances of starting, even in coldest weather, are better than ever. Well, I'll visit my auto light spark plug dealer, Harlow. Do that, Senator, because he's the expert on cleaning and adjustment. And if replacements are needed, he'll recommend those world-famous ignition-engineered Autolite spark plugs, either standard or resistor type. To quickly learn the location of your nearest Autolite spark plug dealer, phone Western Union by number and ask for operator 25. And remember, from bumper to tail light, you're always right with Autolite. And now... Autolite presents transcribed Frankenstein, starring Mr. Herbert Marshall, and hoping once again to keep you in suspense. Do you want me to call him? No, thanks. I'll go out. Well, all right. Tell him not to get too dirty. We're supposed to play croquet with the McDonald's at five. I'll tell him. When's Elizabeth coming home? Tomorrow or, or Tuesday, I think. You both have to come over for dinner. Love to Mary. See you later. Hi. Oh, oh you're just in time to give me a hand. Whew. Now, well, these Indian summers, hot, too sticky. James, I've got to talk to you. Well, of course. What, anything wrong? You know, you haven't looked too good for the past month or so. Something on your mind? Yes. Oh, well, then. Well, let's go in the house. I'll get you a beer. We can talk. No, no, not in the house. Do you mind if we walk? Oh, of course not. Oh, wait a moment. I my pipe over there. There we are. Get some rain. Hope so. I won't have to play croquet. That's not a game. James? Oh, look now, we're friends. You know you can speak to me. What's the matter? One of your patients die? You made a mistake, perhaps? No, nothing like that. Perhaps it's worse. I'm not sure. Has it anything to do with Elizabeth going away? In a way, yes. Oh. My favorite place. You know, Victor, I think of most of my sermons standing here looking across the valley. Lovely, isn't it? Got a match? Oh, thanks. Listen, I've been doing an experiment. It's very complicated. And I've almost finished. Well, that's wonderful. I think I'm a little afraid of it. I don't know. I've tried to think it out myself. I can't find the answer. Go on. You believe in God, don't you? Oh. Well, I mean, because I don't go to church, you don't think that I don't believe, do you? I don't think that at all. You're a good man. I want you to promise me something. You've got to promise that you'll never breathe a word of what I'm about to tell you. You have my word. You swear? I don't usually break my word. Oh, I'm sorry. Look, I... I've made something. It's tremendous. It's impossible. But I think I've done it. And it goes against everything you believe, James. What? What have you done? I've made a... a thing. Why, I don't 
don't understand. I put it together. Heart, brain, nerves, muscle, everything. I've done it. Now do you understand? A complete body. And you're upset because of that? You think that you've done something wrong? But you're a surgeon. What you've done will help to save a life. If you've learned more about the human body, this experiment can't be wrong. It can only do good. Oh, I shouldn't worry. Last night, I made it move. I'm not certain, but I think I can give it life. Absolute life. Now do you see why I'm afraid? I've created a man. I, uh, I'd better call Mary. She'll be worried. All right, but... Uh, I, I won't say anything. I'm with Victor. Now, oh, listen, dear. I'm afraid we'll have to put off the McDonald's. Yes, I know. Well, Mary, I, I have something very important to discuss with Victor. It can't wait. Yes, dear. No, no, don't wait supper. I'll have something over here. Yes, I will. Goodbye. You don't have to see this, Jim, if you don't want to, James. Where is it? In my lab. I had an addition built on. I'm the only one who has a key. I uh, don't say I believe what you told me, but uh, how do you know you can make it live? I mean, is it anything more than galvanic action? You'll see. Why lock it? I always do. Oh. Is that the addition over there? Yes. show you, I want to explain. This is what started it. It was mostly an accident. One of the kids brought in his dog. It had been run over, killed. He wouldn't believe it was dead. He expected me to bring it back. I gave it a shot in the heart. And then another with this stuff. A compound I have fooled with for a long time. Yes? The dog came back to life. Just for a moment. How do you know the dog was dead? No, it was. It had been for two hours. All that happened three years ago. You've been experimenting on things ever since? Yes. It's wrong. I don't know. No, it's wrong. You went to stay, James. What are you going to do? Try to bring it to life? I've got to. I've got to try. Then why did you come to me? I wanted to tell you. I had to tell someone you're my friend. I'm a minister. I preach and believe in the word of God. Do you want to see it? No. No, I don't, but I must. It's not terrible to look at. I've done a pretty good job on it, but it isn't quite finished. I'm not quite done with the face. Oh, my. Well? No. No, Victor. Bury it. Let it be at peace. Don't do it. Even if you can. And I can't imagine it possible. Don't. Don't. Don't even try. Do you realize what it would mean to me? To the world? Yeah. Standing here with you, looking at that, it's easy to imagine anything. I don't want to. Put it to rest, Victor. Forget it. That's just it. I can't. Not until I find out one way or the other. Watch. What are you going to do? I'm going to show you what happened last night. 
I don't want to see. I don't care. I know better. Well, listen to me, Victor. This this mustn't go on. You've got to stop it. Not yet. Not until I find out. Does Elizabeth know what you're doing? No. Why did you send her away? I didn't want her here when I made the last test. Because you're ashamed. You know it's wrong. You know what she'd think. I'm not ashamed. I think I'm a little frightened at the incredible greatness of what I've done. It's bigger than anything since the world began. If it moves, if you prove your point to me, will you Will you stop then? Will you destroy it? The formulas, whatever papers you have, destroy all of it, will you? I don't know. Hand me that hypodermic, will you? No. All right. There. If I say I believe you, Victor, if... You don't have to be afraid of it. It couldn't hurt you, you know. There's only enough of this stuff to stimulate a small portion of its brain. I'm not afraid of it. I'm afraid for us all. I've never preached to you, Victor. It moved its left foot last night. Then the right. I'm going to try the arm now. Move the light over, please. Thanks. Watch carefully. Only takes a few seconds. Now. yesterday. The movement only lasts for a moment now. That's all. I, 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 I don't know what to say. I, I don't even think I understand what I've seen except that it's terrible. Because you don't understand or because of what it means? I'm afraid, if you like. I'm afraid for you, for what you've done. That thing lying there, you've You've got no right. I won't allow... Oh, what's that? What? It's... Stethoscope. It's impossible. There wasn't enough... Bringing you Mr. Herbert Marshall in Frankenstein. Tonight's presentation in radio's outstanding theater of thrills, Suspense. Well, oh, who's this Johnny Plugcheck who's always electioneering about spark plugs? Why, Senator, Johnny is a helpful hinter fighting old man winter. He's the blithe reminder to wise motorists that now's the time to visit your Autolite spark plug dealer to get ready for the cold, driving days ahead. Change the oil and grease, put in antifreeze, inspect the battery cable. And check those important spark plugs, too! Because when your spark plugs are right, your chances of starting, even in coldest weather, are better than ever. And if my Autolite spark plug dealer finds my spark plugs need replacing, how long? Why, if they're worn out, he'll recommend a set of the world famous. Famous ignition engineered Autolite spark plug, Senator, like the amazing Autolite resistor spark plug. It's one of the greatest advancements in spark plugs for automotive use in the past 20 years. When you have a set installed in your car, you'll get double spark plug life, smoother engine performance, and quick starts as compared to spark plugs without a built in resistor. So, friends, visit your Autolite spark plug dealer soon. And remember, from bumper to tail light, you're always right with Autolite. And now, Autolite brings back to our Hollywood soundstage Mr. Herbert Marshall in Elliot Lewis's production of Frankenstein, a tale well calculated to keep you in suspense. Enough. It couldn't have. 
Watson, C.C., came yesterday and left the drugs accumulative. Maybe that's it. His eyes are open. What are you going to do? Now, listen to his heart again. It's got to be destroyed. You've got to put an end to it. She's inhuman. Don't you see what you're doing? You can't give it a soul. No. You can't give it. How do you know what I can give it? I've given it life, haven't I? It sees. It breathes. Moves. Perhaps hears. Yes. Does it hear? Help! Look. Did you see that? It blinked. The head jerked. It hears. It's aware of sound. Does it feel pain? Don't, Victor. It's not an animal. You formed it like a man. Give it the dignity of one. I won't let you do that to it. I have gone this far, James. Put down the scalpel. What are you going to prove by that? I think you must be mad. I don't interfere with your work, James. Why? There's someone at the door. Yes. I think I'd better strap it down on the table. You won't forget your promise, will you? I'm sorry I gave my word. I'm sorry you ever told me about this. I feel I'm as guilty as you are now. Whatever took you so long? Hello, James. Oh, uh, hello, Elizabeth. Darling, I tried to call from the station, but the line's out of order. Oh, I'm sorry, dear. Did you have a nice time? Lovely. Everybody sends their love. That's good. <laughs> what have you two been up to? How's Mary, James? Oh, very well, thank you. <laughs> what a fine pair of sober sides you are. What did you do, darling? Break one of my good dishes? I knew I shouldn't have left you alone. Well... What are we standing in the hall for? Let's go Elizabeth, into Elizabeth, uh, uh, I must be going. Mary will be wondering, particularly if the phone's out of order. It's raining very hard. No, oh, no, I'll be all right. You take an umbrella. There's one in the kitchen. Are you going to tell her? No. You won't unstrap it from the table, will you? Not yet. All right, I'll try to come back later. I want to think. About what? You've changed since you came to see me this afternoon. You really don't care what I think now, do you? I suppose not. Thanks anyway, James. Are you going to let it live? That's funny from you. Have I the right to kill it? You've already done something you had no right to do. Something that you don't even understand. The creation of man isn't your job, it isn't mine. Oh, I know your bright scientific mind's laughing Here's at me. Here's the umbrella, James. But I wish you'd wait until the storm blows over. No, I, I really must get back. Thank you, Elizabeth. I'll, I'll return it tomorrow. Uh, goodbye. Well... What's the matter with him? Have you been arguing religion again, Victor? No, dear. Look, I'm doing a little work in the lab. It's rather important. Do you mind? What is going on, Victor? There's something. No, dear, nothing at all. There isn't. I know there is. What's the matter? Nothing, dear, really. I, I've got to get back to work now. Can you understand what I say? You feel it? 
feel any pain? Are you hungry? I'm a man like you. You are a man. Do you understand? Here. This is a mirror. You can see yourself in it. Look. It's all right. It's all right. It's angry. Oh, he doesn't show anger in his face. There's emotion, though. It sees ugliness and is afraid. I'll have to get it back on the table and put it to sleep. That's the best way. Then use a stronger strap or chain. The eyes just staring. They seem watery. What a marvel it is, though. I want you to come over here and sit down. Do you hear me? Come here and sit down. Come here. No, don't touch that. No, stop it. Stop it. Put it down. Thanks, James. I lied. I'm afraid. He's in here. 
you are hiding. It wasn't for me. I'm afraid. I should have destroyed it. James was right. I lost the metal with this flashlight. Too wet. Ah, that's better. What's that? In the corner. It's all right. I understand. I won't hurt you. Don't be frightened. It's going to be all right. You'll hardly feel this. It won't hurt. I might have hit it. I don't know. It's gone. Yes, are you? Victor. Victor. Oh, Victor. He never recovered consciousness again. Outside, I looked for the thing I'd shot at. But there was no sign of it. I returned to the lab and burnt every paper, destroyed every single evidence of Victor Frankenstein's terrible experiment. But the result of that experiment has never been found. Nor have I been able yet to convince the authorities that such a thing ever existed. Tonight's star, Mr. Herbert Marshall. This is Harlow Wilcox speaking for Autolite, world's largest independent manufacturer of automotive electrical equipment. Autolite is proud to serve the greatest names in the industry. They are members of the Autolite family, as well as other 98,000 Autolite distributors and dealers in the United States and thousands more in Canada and throughout the world. Our family also includes the nearly 30,000 men and women in 28 great Autolite plants from coast to coast and Autolite plants in many foreign countries, as well as the 18,000 people who have invested a portion of their savings in Autolite. Every Autolite product is backed by constant research and precision built to the highest standards of quality and performance. So remember, from bumper to taillight, you're always right with Autolite. Next week, a story based on fact, terrifying in its truth. The dramatic report of a man returning home to find he now lives in a frightened city. Our star, Mr. Frank Lovejoy. The program will be heard on Suspense. Tonight's story was adapted for Suspense by Anthony Ellis. Suspense is transcribed and directed by Elliot Lewis. Music was written by Lucian Morlick and conducted by Lud Gluskin.